morning. Good morning. My name is Ben Testa, and uh, I welcome one and all of you to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Huntington and this morning's Sunday service. During this service, we will be celebrating dance and our relationship to spirituality. This congregation was founded uh, 67 years ago in 1947. Our congregation is dedicated to our search for truth, meaning, justice, and respect for all things. Within our treasured environment of diversity, we continually find additional meaning by pursuing our wide-ranging spiritual journeys rather than basing based beliefs on organized dogma. Gabrielle Roth, a movement and theater artist, views the body as a divine instrument. Mind, body, and spirit as a seamless web of oneness. She feels that rhythmic movement affects us like a kind of prayer, which frees our heart and clears our mind to put us more deeply in touch with the vital presence of spirit in, as, and through us. May we, as a congregation, experience a spiritual awakening through dance movement. Bharatanatyam is one of the main 
forms of Indian classical dance and can be traced back to a manuscript from 400 BCE called the Natya Shastra, which is the most ancient and most elaborate scripture describing every element and aspect of the sacred dance Bharata Natya. The Hindu god Shiva is called Nataraja in his form of cosmic dancer. Dancers of Bharata Natya portray the Lord Shiva through poses and elaborate gestures and movements. Bharata Natya is known for its grace, purity and tenderness, and sculpturesque poses. According to Hindu belief, the whole universe is brought into existence through the dance. Bharata Natya started out as a dance only performed by women. But today it is one of the most popular and widely performed dance styles and is practiced by both male and female dancers all over the world. In, in Sri Lanka, there is something called Candian dance. It's not the kind of candy they call it. <laughs> candy is actually a place. Uh, Candian dance is a dance that originated from the area called Candy, with a K of the Central Hills region in Sri Lanka. According to the legend, a dan the dance is based on a ritual that was done for a king who was suffering from a mysterious illness. Indian shamans came to the island to heal him, and this dance was part of the ritual. After the ritual, the illness vanished, so the dance was adopted and continues today. The Candian dance is traditionally only done by men, but now there are several schools which train women in the Candian dance form. In Japan, there is something called the Kagura dance. Kagura is a Shinto theatrical dance that was once strictly a ceremonial art. It is a dance that brings the gods together with the people to get dance together. It was a sacred dance performed at the imperial court by shrine maidens called Miko, who were supposedly descendants of the goddess Ameno Uzume. The Miko were considered shamans who through their dance could channel the power of the gods to realize prayers, give thanks, and purify space. Kagura has evolved in many directions over the span of a millennium. Today it is very much a living tradition and is performed each year in December at the historic Onmatsuri Festival in the ancient Japanese city of Nara. In Korea, there is something called the Salamuri dance. Dance has been a crucial part of Korean culture for the past 5,000 years, beginning in shamanistic rituals and molding into court and folk ritual and modern dance. Salpuri is a Korean folk dance that was originally used in Korean shamanism. Salpuri, Salpuri is always performed as a solo dance, usually by the most senior dancer in the group, and she wears a white costume called a hanbok dress and carries a long white handkerchief. The unfolding of the handkerchief represents the mind being purified. The dancer moves in circular patterns, symbolizing Koreans' awareness of the cycle of life. In Africa, this particular dance that you see on the screen is called the Tswana dance from Botswana. It's very lively and energetic. This traditional dance of Botswana is rhythmic and expressive and is used for storytelling and healing. It is usually performed at celebrations such as weddings or the birth of a child. There are different dances all around Africa, in different countries, for different tribes. Dance has been an indispensable element of life in African society, binding together communities and helping individuals to understand their roles in the community. In spiritual rituals, dance helps people to understand and to remember their role in relation to the divine. Dance in social ceremonies and rites of passage have helped to keep community life vibrant, contributing to a sense of security, safety, and continuity. African dancer Alphonse Tero said, because it has more power than gesture, more eloquence than word, more richness than writing, and because it expresses the most profound experiences of human beings, dance is a complete and self-sufficient language. It is the expression of life. Here we go to the whirling dervishes. Sufi whirling or Sufi spinning is a form of meditation which is practiced by the Sufi dervishes of the Mev Mevlevi order, a Sufi order founded by the followers of the 13th century Persian mystic Rumi. Rumi was walking through the town marketplace one day and when he heard the goldsmiths reciting the prayer La Elaha Ella Allah as they were hammering the gold, 
Rumi was so filled with happiness that he stretched out both of his arms and started spinning in a circle. With that, the practice of whirling was born. The worship ceremony that includes music and whirling is called Kasema, through which whirling dervishes aim to reach the source of all perfection. The whirling is performed by spinning on the left foot in repetitive circles, which has been seen as a symbolic imitation of the planets in the solar system orbiting the sun, as explained by the Sufis. While whirling, the right arm is directed to the sky, ready to receive God's beneficence, and the left hand, upon which his eyes are fastened, is turned toward the earth. The whirling dervish conveys God's spiritual gift to those who are witnessing the ceremony. Revolving from right to left around the heart, the dervish embraces all humanity with love. Now, here we see the Romani people, who are also known as Gypsies, the Roma Gypsies. The Romani people are an ethnic group that originated in India and arrived in Europe at least a thousand years ago. The Romani are widely, widely dispersed, with their largest concentration, concentrated populations in Europe, especially Central and Eastern Europe. The Romani people do not belong to any one country. Kola Kumela is a dancer who lives in the Midwest here in the United States, but has found greater meaning in her life by going back to her ancestral roots and embracing Romani Gypsy dance. She recently published an article in which she wrote, The spirit of the Roma people seems to fill me up. The resilience of these people resides in their song and their dance. They have survived the vitality of their culture. I experience dance as a way to draw up the power of the earth, share it in community, and release it through our universe. And here we see the Native American fancy dance. Although this is a Native American dance, this is not a traditional dance of any particular tribe. Traditional dances by individual tribes are often not shared with anyone outside of the tribe, as they are deeply sacred ceremonies that are often performed in the Native language of the tribe. What you see here is the fancy dance, which is done at powwows all over the world. There's actually a powwow going on right now in the Queens County Museum, and there will be another one in Riverhead at the end of the month, if anyone's interested. Uh, the fancy dance was created by members of the Ponca tribe in Oklahoma in the 1920s and 1930s in an attempt to preserve their culture and religion, because at that time, Native American religious dances were outlawed by the American and Canadian government. Traditional dances went underground, but the fancy dance was created. It was a new dance that could legally be danced in public. It is loosely based on the traditional war dance. If you go to a powwow, you can see the dance being done by different tribes with different costumes, all very rich, colorful, and elaborate. It is the most beautiful experience, and it's wonderful to watch. The dance demonstrates the resilience of the Native American people and how their spirit survives, even against all they have endured. So these are some of the dances from around the world that have been done as a spiritual practice or that show how people have expressed their spirit through dance. But now I move on to modern dance, which also celebrates the spirit. And we begin with Isadora Duncan. Mm -hmm. In the early 20th century, dancers began to appreciate the qualities of the individual, the necessities of ritual and religion, the primitive, the expressive, and the emotional. People started embracing dance once again as a form of expression of the individual and of the spirit. Isadora Duncan's philosophy of dance moved away from rigid ballet technique that was the most acceptable form of dance at the time and toward what she perceived as natural movement. To restore dance to a high art form instead of entertainment, she sought the connection between emotions and movement. Isadora said, I spent long days and nights in the studio seeking that dance, which might be the divine expression of the human spirit through the medium of the body's movement. She also said, if I could tell you what it meant, there would be no point in dancing it. <laughs> and here's Martha Graham. Martha Graham said, dance is the hidden language of the soul. Martha Graham danced and choreographed for over 70 years. She was the first dancer ever to perform at the White House, traveled abroad as a cultural ambassador, and received the highest civilian award of the USA, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. 
1994, there was a documentary called The Dancer Revealed. And Martha Graham said, I have spent all my life with dance and being a dancer. It's permitting life to use you in a very intense way. Sometimes it's not pleasant. Sometimes it's fearful. But nevertheless, it is inevitable. And here is Kazuo Ono. He does Buto, which I know is a, a less familiar dance, but it is a modern Japanese dance art. And it was founded by Kazuo Ono and another man named Tatsumi Chikara after World War II. It began as a dark dance and as an anti-traditional dance, as traditional dances felt void of freedom of expression to Bhutto's founders. Bhutto is now being done in many new and different ways by people all around the world. It is especially popular in Europe, in countries like France and Germany, and here in the United States, mainly on the West Coast. Even Cosmo Ono himself developed his own way of doing Bhutto, where his intention was to do a dance that sent out universal love to all who witnessed his performances. He lived to be 103, and toward the end of his life he continued dancing, even with just his eyes. Kazuo Ono said to his students in one of his workshops, there are an, inf an infinity of ways in which you can move from that spot over there to this spot over here. But have you figured out those movements in your head, or are we seeing your soul in motion? Even that fleck at the tip of your nail embodies your soul. The essential thing is that your movements, even when you're standing still, embody your soul at all times. He also said, the soul is the moving force. It leads the way. If the soul leads, the body will follow. Take painstaking care in everything you do. Your movements must at all times be imbued with the spiritual presence. And now I'd like to share personal experience of my own, I feel Bhutto is my dance and I learned about it years ago. Since I discovered it, it has felt like it's my dance. It is free-flowing and it has a spiritual component, which really called to something deep within me. And I do Bhutto in my own way. A few years ago, I did street performing here in Huntington Village, and I called it Bhutto Busking. My intention whenever I went out was to send out prayers to the world through my dance and my movements. It is a spiritual experience for me, and like Kazuo Ono, my intention is to send out unconditional love. When I began street performing, I didn't know how people would respond. Here I was, a 40-something year old woman in a costume going out to dance on the street corner. <laughs> it's a little nuts, right? <laughs> I felt crazy, but I was compelled to do it. What came as a surprise, a very happy surprise, was the way that people responded. They stopped, watched, waved, smiled, took photos, and they took photos of me with their children. They asked to dance with me. Whenever I went out to dance, really unique and unexpected things would happen. It was really an amazing experience. This is one of the reasons why the street is one of my favorite. This is my favorite state. One thing that often happened was that people would ask me if I was, what I was doing was spiritual, and sometimes they would ask if I was in a cult. No, I'm not in a cult, <laughs> I replied, but it was a spiritual thing for me to do, as well as a form of creative expression. What gave me great joy was that people felt something from what I was doing. They weren't just seeing it, but feeling it. That was a wonderful thing, and I realized that as much as my dance does something for me, but it seems to be doing something for others too, through dance. One evening, a young man approached me as I was getting ready to go home. He looked very tired. His eyes were red and swollen. He asked me about my dance and if it was spiritual. After I answered his questions, he thanked me. He said to me, I had a really bad day. I didn't know what to say, but I paused and I realized that his eyes were red because he hadn't been crying. He then said, thank you, your dance brought me peace. On another evening, while street performing, I saw out of the corner of my eye a little girl who walked across the street with her parents and placed something in my hat. And I didn't look until I got home. What I found in my hat that night was a folded piece of paper on which the little girl had drawn a lady with a star and a heart. 
and the word love was written on the other side. Here it is. Yeah, this is something I treasure and carry with me. Love. I know for myself that dance has changed my life. Through dance, we find our stories, and I know this is true for me. Sometimes I put on a piece of music and start moving, and before I know it, my movements are telling a story from within me that needs to be expressed, some deep inner truth that I was, until that moment, consciously unaware of. Once we know our stories, we can begin setting them free from within us. Dance has been my medicine. As a very dear and lovely lady, who I am blessed to know, named Nancy, recently reminded me, we are all spiritual beings having a human physical experience. Dance is a way to transcend. And with this, we move to Gabrielle Roth. Gabrielle Roth was an American dancer and a musician, and had a special interest in shamanism. She created the Five Rhythms approach to movement in the late 1970s. The Dance of the Five Rhythms movement system is called the Wave, and focuses on five body rhythms. It is a way to become conscious through dance. As Gabrielle Roth explained, I call my form of ecstatic dance the Wave. It is a moving meditation using five basic rhythms that form a map to your innermost being. The first rhythm, flowing, is fluid, continuous motion. And flowing builds to staccato, short, sharp, because it stops and starts. And then chaos is wild, abandoned, and free, totally surrendered. From here, we are lifted into the lyrical rhythm, airy, light, playful. And this energy will dissolve into moving stillness, focusing on the inner dance, the still point of our moving center. Anybody can do this practice. It's not about how you look. It's about the way you feel. And some days you're going to feel different. You may feel heavy or inert or depressed. So get into it. Move your heavy, inert feelings into a dance. Breathe into them and they become flowing. Whatever you're feeling, surrender to it, move with it, breathe into it, and it will change. Some rhythms are more comfortable for each of us than others. Some you may resist, but trust that each one is a teacher, a catalyst, a healer, a gateway to your soul. Gabrielle said, we all share the wound of fragmentation, and we can all share in the cure of unification. Healing is the unification of all our forces, the power to being, feeling, knowing, and seeing. I look in the mirror and I look out the window and I see myself and others struggling to be in our bodies, struggling to know who we are and what we need, to like ourselves rather than wanting to be somebody else or somewhere else. I see our inability to relate, to communicate from the heart, to overcome our distance and alienation from I see us avoiding each other's eyes at a loss to know what others need. I see people searching for direction, trying to summon up their personal power, longing for the strength to be independent. The wounded healer in me knows that healing our driven selves comes from our ability to empower our bodies, hearts, minds, souls, and spirits once more, bringing them into vital unity. Spiritual healing means taking responsibility for being a whole person. We have to take responsibility for being a body, for having a heart, for possessing a mind, and for awakening our soul and opening our spirit. We need to do right by our body, purify our relationships, use our mind for creative freedom and not enslavement, free the soul from ego, and undertake the spiritual journey. A whole person is an inspired person one who embodies the spirit. If you put the body in motion, you will change. May the light around us guide our footsteps and hold us fast to the best and most righteous that we seek. May the darkness around us nurture our dreams and give us rest so that we may give ourselves the work of our world. Let us seek to remember the wholeness of our lives the weaving of light and shadow in this great and astonishing dance in which we move. And now, I invite you all to dance.